Oh, what a week! What a week! Are we reco- Are we in the podcast right now? Is that has it started? Uh, I, mean, I think that might be started by me saying "What a week!" Yeah. Wow. All right. The title yeah, for the podcast: What a week. Yeah. I, I might have a better one later on, but I'll get to that when I get to my story. Yeah. There's usually usually the way these go. Something Duncan says becomes the title. That's yeah. I mean, I try to be the funny guy. You know, I try to have. I try to come up with uh, the best uh, the best one liners. Yeah. Like hats. Hats. <laughs> Boogies. Quote of the year, Immaterial Gamers. I, I had fun doing that channel trailer. I didn't end up being mean with with highlights. You know, got stuff going. It was all nice. Our producer, Stefan, is still talking to us at some point. Uh, apparently it's our fault, or my fault, it just says your, and it's too hot for hats. Believe me, there's nothing better than having a nice baseball cap on your head. Baseball, baseball. Let's play baseball. Saves, saves your eyes, man. Yeah. And it saves people seeing your bald spot. <laughs> bald spot. <laughs> I have one. Yeah. Yeah, I know. What can it's you do? It's so nice. Good. Ge- I have such wonderful hair genetics. You know? It's like my dad's got a full set of hair. And my mom's had kept... She's like, she's like 53 or 54 or something. She's still, she's still got all of her color. Uh, that's just that's it's beautiful, man. It's nice. I mean, in the light, my hair. What I mean, what's what's left of it at the moment is becoming, you know, it's it's nice and it has a sheen to it. It's just thinning out in a lot of places, and on the top of my head is just it's gone. Sucks. Male pattern bald. Yep, male pattern baldness. Just uh, <laughs> not even gonna bother fixing that one. Yep. I know. It's it's just it's just awful. And I've tried the caffeine shampoo trick as well. Is a caffeine <laughs> shampoo trick? Uh, apparently it stimulates the follicles in, in the head and, and has the chance of causing regrowth. No. I, I, it's probably... I'm, I'm sure that's all bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you well, never know. It might work for listen, you. Listen, if, if gorillas can go bald, then there's nothing a human can do that's going to fix that. It's just That's just nature at that point. Yeah. I just let it happen. You know, I denied saying I had the bald spot for a couple of years and then just went, ah, fuck it. It's just only shave it all off at the end of the day. Just shave it all off and use a toupee. No one will notice. Oh, and I've been doing just, the brush over. Just like a great big, like, like just, like massive, like 18 inch long wig. It's just, <laughs> it's like no one, no one will notice. Yeah. I go for a hair metal wig. It'd be great. I'll fulfill my dreams of being in Kiss. Wait, I actually kind of did that for a Secret Santa last year. It wasn't... It, we didn't do an actual Secret Santa. We did a white elephant exchange instead. And I felt sorry for the person who got my present, which was... Um, it was me with Kiss-style face paint on as the as the lead singer of the cover band Miss. I was Gene Chimmons. <laughs> that sounds like a miss to me. I'll be seeing that in my nightmares tonight. <laughs> well, at least, you know, if there's, if there's anything that's happening with this podcast, I can know nightmares will have been caused at the fore of a 31-year-old rotund man dressed in face paint and ginger hair looking like nothing they've ever seen before. So based on that, yeah, this is the Immaterial Gamers podcast. The first podcast of year two. Yeah, year two. So that said, uh, you know, that's all good. And, and the this subscription you for a year or two costs you nothing. No, it doesn't. It just costs your time to listen or to watch. And uh, we've got myself, Ryan, the balding 31-year-old rotund man. We've got, we got Who Darius. Who may or may not be in a Kiss cover band. Hello, yep. everyone. It's your usual vampire. Yep, the Eastern European vampire himself. And uh, we've, we've got uh, Duncan, Canadian that's, extraordinaire. That's me. I'm back. First He's podcast back. of year two, baby. Yeah. Just getting in just at the last minute, right before everyone had to go without me. Yeah. And we've got a uh, we've got the producer, the one that doesn't speak while at work. It's Steph. Even if he did speak, you wouldn't hear it because he's not recording. Boo. Not really Crickets. Crickets. <laughs> Tumbleweed. 
Uh, so, uh, yeah, how's it going, guys? Good. Uh, you know, a bit of an exciting morning, but I'm, uh, I'm alright now. Good, good. Darius? Good, but tired. <laughs> yeah. I'm always tired. Cool. I never rested. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, message from the producer, sleep. it's too hot. You can always... <laughs> I it's can not. Drink daylight. Yeah. yeah, you can always... Oh, well, yeah, like, like Duncan said, you could sleep at some point. Did you ever get around to beating that, that vampire game? Oh, he did. I did. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah. my God. Like two minutes before the end of pod, uh, Podcast 52, <laughs> I... Steph reminds me to ask Darius whether he completed it. Yes. And yes. It was completed. Uh so it is now that I actually enjoyed doing that with the uh, with the podcast last week of just interspersing clips from videos of series we were happy to talk about. Yeah, which was a uh, it was nice. Yeah, I missed the the anniversary for family stuff, but I don't know. I guess because I wasn't there the first time, I felt it also felt kind of appropriate. It's just like ah, eh, I wasn't there at the beginning. I won't be here at the anniversary. Maybe that'll be my thing. I'll just miss every anniversary. <laughs> just. <laughs> Just, just leave yourself, leave yourself a note for me to, to, to read, and we'll just, uh, we'll just do it like, like that. Because we, you know, we did yeah. talk about Monster Prom, even though we apparently made saying the words Monster Prom a real, real hassle. Both myself and Darius ended up falling into the trap of Monster Plum. Monster Plum. Yep. That's a Monster Plum right there. It's way, that is way bigger than a plum should be. Yeah, just definite. It's James and the Giant Plum. Plum Plum. Doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> nah. Nah. So, uh, you know what? I think it's best to kick year two right into gear. In We're the talking ball. about games we played. In the balls? Uh, yeah, kick in the balls. Okay, we'll kick these games we played in the balls. So, uh, yeah, it's time for what's been played. What's been played? And so... Let's start with Ryan this time. Okay, we'll start with me. I broke out the Wii U this week. I I literally thought you were going to say I broke out the weed. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) Ryan had a very good anniversary celebration. Oh no, that'll be podcast 420. Ooh, we got a long ways to go then. Hopefully it'll be legal in the UK by then. Yeah, maybe. It'd be nothing better. Right, how how, how should we do this? I have never smoked the weed in any shape or form. So you know what, podcast 420... Let's just go for it. Ryan tries it. <laughs> <laughs> but now, what I did is I broke out the Wii U and I got a game that I meant to have on my radar for ever since I got the Wii U last year, you know, years after it's already been defunct. But um, what we did do is buy a game called Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE Pound Hashtag Whatever the other way people say that symbol. What symbol? Okay. The hashtag symbol. Uh, the hashtag symbol. Hmm. Sounds like a bunch. Hash- sounds like a bunch of cursing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was a yeah Tokyo Mirage Sessions, which is a crossover game between a Shin Megami Sensei game, like the games Shin Megami Sensei or Persona, and Fire mm-hmm. Emblem. Oh. Oh my God, Fire Emblem! I like that game. Yeah. There's not much in terms of a Fire Emblem combat system to it. It is a pure Persona-style, SMT-style RPG. It's just that it has spirits of Fire Emblem characters. Okay, fair enough. But, uh, yeah, plays out like your like any other... Well, it basically plays out like a Persona game, to be honest. Except your main character speaks. Konnichiwa! Oh, it's heavy on the Japanese. That's all he says, actually. He just says Konnichiwa. All the way through. He says that and everyone else goes, as animas or whatever it is, you know, I, I will do my best. I've butchered the Japanese language, and for that I apologise. But, um, yeah, no, I'm actually quite enjoying it. It is, you know, I love the SMT games. They're brutal in difficulty, but they are so fun in their mechanics. And the story's alright as well, I suppose. You, you, some school kids who one of you was involved in a disappearance of an entire theatre of people one night, and there's some demons leaking into the world to take humans out and steal their performer. It's like their ability to perform 
what's about them, their personality, drive, motivation, and to try and do a demon takeover of the world, from what it looks like. Um, and you are part of a group of hybrid people. Effectively, you are talent performers and demon hunters. Talent performers and demon hunters. Yep. Uh, apparently the best way of... The dungeons in the game are called idolospheres, as in idols. This sounds like a shoujo anime or something. <laughs> I, I, you know what would be the best thing is to probably describe it as such? It is very weeaboo. Very anime. Um, well, it's Japanese, so what do you expect? Yeah. But it's fun. That's, oh, that's, yeah. that's the main part of it. That's that's what should you know, that's what makes games what they are. They're fun. They're not like Call of Duty where you should use, let's see, oh, how do we do this? Uh, let's sell the fact that in your multiplayer PvP games, you can launch white phosphorus on people to get your kill streaks going. White phosphorus, the banned substance that is not to be used in combat situations and is an actual literal fucking war crime to use in civilian situations. <laughs> Uh, yeah sorry that went a bit dark but uh yeah but at least you know people who want to be singers and dancers while also battling the demon hordes is a fun experience though they have messed up well they've changed the how the attacks work in the game or in an smt game and it threw me off initially so in every Shin Megami Tensei game, it's usually the same thing. You and your ter- team take a, or get given a set amount of turns per round to hit the opposing team. After you've used all your, your moves, the opposing team does the same thing back. And the way that you manipulate how much damage you can deal per turn is by exploiting weaknesses. So every character in a game, enemy or ally, has strengths and weaknesses. And if you exploit the weakness of a given enemy, you gain an extra half a turn. Sounds which very allows persona. You to, yeah. That's the persona who's based off the the SMT um, mechanics. I mean, it used to be called SMT Persona, but they dropped that because Persona branched out into its own franchise. It was initially a spin-off game anyway. But um, but yeah, so so far so Persona. In Tokyo Mirage Sessions, they've threw that out the window. You have a standard turn-based combat bar. So you've got a bar at the top that shows all your characters, all the enemies, and when a character gets to the left-hand side, it's their move, they can do their action, so on and so forth. But that's not to say that they've still not made the combat interesting, because the way that it works is they now have the session mechanic. So... Every character still has strengths and weaknesses. But the way it works now is that when you hit an enemy and you exploit their weakness, if a character has what's called a session skill, they then attack as well. And the idea is that you chain them all together to try and do your main character's attack and then your other party member's attacks to deal as much damage as they can per attack. So a team can a team of three members could hit an enemy nine times if they exploit the weaknesses correctly. But again, like I say, it works the other way around as well, because SMT has been nothing if not balanced. Hmm. So, you know. But yeah, other than that, same sort of same sort of business. Items that upgrade, different weapons that change each character's strengths and weaknesses, fusion. There's no demons. You don't you don't ally with demons anymore. You don't have to do weird negotiations in the middle of combat. But every party member has a mirage, which is what provides them strength. And they go into they go into carnage mode to fuse with this spirit of a fire emblem character and kick shit out of people. But uh yeah, no, so far so good. Um heading towards like a boss now. It seems to be the sister of one of the main characters who disappeared at the beginning of the game, so it's a uh, interesting but uh i may come back to that and talk more about it at some point once i've got a bit further through the story it does sound it does sound interesting mm. so uh yeah that's that's me and so uh darius since you were so eager to get me to go first i shall no i wasn't you going second no i don't want to 
No, oh, it's too late. You've been chosen now, sir. Damn you. You've been chosen. Damn as, you, uh, Ryan. Sac sacrifice for the... No, tribute for the Hunger Games. No. For the yep. 52nd Immaterial Gamers Hunger Game. So, yep. does that, the, does that mean I will die soon enough? Only if you lose. And what I have we to do We will rate your performance at the end of this uh, section. God damn it. Should I strip down or something? Nope. Don't do that. But so you should get so you get sponsors. <laughs> yeah, so so you get sponsors. Um please provide <laughs> us with information of the game you have played. Right, so what I have been playing is well, actually it's gonna be up in the span of the last two weeks. Okay. Because, first of all, yes, I have finished the vampire. Yay! As I, as I mentioned last week. And yep. I was literally like less than two hours, two or three hours, I think, something like that, um, before the finish of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I do have a feeling that I should take longer, like basically slip in the game, make the time pass, yes. so that the... Um, communities in you know in each district can evolve yeah uh, but yeah anyway i didn't know it's going to be the end of the game i thought there would be a little bit more to it so yeah i went so you, I went so you were ambushed by the ending uh kind of yeah it does it didn't really told me that yeah this is the ending and there is no coming back from it okay because most of the <laughs> games most of the games telling you that that's that's it, that if you move forward, there will be yeah. no coming back. Yes, you still can come back uh, if this is like open world game. You still can come back to it. In Final Fantasy XV, there's like 12 of those. Where it's just like, by the way, you can't come back if you go forward from here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I have finished the story. I have battled the last boss, uh, which was easier than most of the other encounters. Hmm. Um, yeah, I was expecting to be battling like the old kind of vampire who I should, what I would have to trick somehow to beat him. Uh, but no, it was like a, let's call it like on my level vampire who I just kind of like slashed, pierce, bite, suck, all those suck, all those things. <laughs> yeah, I was sucking his blood. How do you suck a vampire's blood? And basically to make it yours. Do you, if you suck, if a vampire sucks another vampire's blood, do they become a super vampire? No, it's you just regenerate your own hell. Or does that just kill you? <laughs> hey, well, um, that's two wrongs make a dead. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, um, I was expecting more for the end from the ending, as in, it turns out that the whole big old vampire who made me a vampire my maker basically uh, was an Asian jackass who didn't really care about anything mm. uh, basically the ending made the whole plot shallow because uh, at the end it was like okay uh, he is uh, the, ba the big Asian uh, god god like vampire yeah. and there is she, she's a godlike blood um, goddess or something, and all what she wants, and all what she wants, because she cannot control the hunger so much. She just wants to ca cause the havoc on Earth, and she does that every century or every few centuries. Reminds me of those uh, old pizza pocket commercials. It's like hunger; it just can't be ignored. Except instead of pizza pockets, it's blood. And yeah, and basically Look. that the, the the old dude is just telling her, okay, had you had your phone? Did you cause enough chaos? Did you make them suffer enough right now so we can go back to sleep now? And she's yeah, let's go sleep. Yay, the game has done. Done. <laughs> it's like a it's like a it's like a dad or a grandpa taking their kid to the park. So you like, have you had your phone? It's like yes, we can go home now. So you didn't even need to be there. You didn't really even interact with any of it. So you were just, it's just yeah. a doctor, and that was it. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Wow. I was, I'm, okay, this is not the main focus of the game. Uh, but it was like a main anchor point for the whole plot. Hmm. 
and yeah, I'm just kind of like disappointed of it, but I do, I did like um, exploring all the stories of the other characters because they are not, they were not, they weren't connected uh, into like some of them. They weren't connected to the vampire situation. You just kind of dealt with normal life situations and problems. Sometimes when you're a vampire, you just want to get away from vampire problems and vampire drama, you know? You yeah. want to know, like, what's the banker up to? You know, like, what, what, what's, what's going on with the baker down the street, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, well, uh, playing this game on good part, so where you're trying not to kill anyone, I've mentioned it many, many times, it's mm. freaking hard as hell. I imagine it'll be really hard to be a vampire and not eat people. Yes, it is. It really is. Because the amount of the experience which you're getting from the normal standard quest and random encounters with humans, which are and like basic enemies, it's minimal. So you eat. Yeah, I remember. So okay, yeah. Well, there is that. Uh, you either spending loads of hours killing random shit, slipping every, let's say, ten twenty minutes of real time, which makes the time the game progress, which make the villagers. Um, progress their own story for which you're getting experience. So yeah, if you, mm. if you want to spend like 4 to 60 hours on sleeping and talking to everyone, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I remember in uh, the game, the PS3 titles Infamous and Infamous 2. I don't know, I yes. can't remember if you can do it in Infamous 2, but I remember in Infamous 1, it was the thing where uh, you know, if you were if you were fighting bad guys, you could either just like knock them out and that was just like neutral experience and yes. neutral karma um or you could kill them like you could like uh, you could like handcuff them with electricity which doesn't make any sense and that would be like good karma mm -hmm. oh yes or or if you were desperate for power to like recharge your electrical powers you could just like drain all their bioelectric energy out of a person which fully recharged all of your energy which obviously doesn't make any sense i don't know why one person recharges a superhuman but it does it anyway but that gives you evil karma mm. so but it was obviously always way better to <laughs> to go and steal all their energy because hey you could fully recharge all of your electricity if you eat one person mm. you know However, so even if you were playing the so even if you were playing with like if you were playing the good version of the game, you could, like, you know, every once in a while, you could just eat one random person and it wouldn't give you that much karma. You could fix it pretty easily. Mm -hmm. if, you just, yeah. if you're just desperate for electricity. Especially by fighting the bosses or something like that. Mm. So, yeah, anyway, I got a, pl um, I think a trophy for it for being a good guy in this game. Yeah, good guy trophy. <laughs> you, got a, you got a trophy for being a good guy. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 told, I, I forgot that's like, that's like, you know, that's what they call it. Are you playing, is this a PlayStation game? It is. Yeah, I for, I kind of forgot that that's what the, their system was called, the trophy system, because this is like, it's this funny thing. It's like handing a vampire a trophy for being a good guy, like like IRL, like that would just be really funny. Just a, just a little a little bronze trophy that says good didn't guy. Didn't eat imposter. didn't eat that many people. <laughs> yeah, didn't turn us all into into a plasma farm. But yeah, anyway, being a bad guy in the games is kind of easy at the moment because you just literally mm. kill every living person. Yeah. Right. I mean that's that's always that was always the thing with karma systems in games when it where it went one way or the other. It was a lot harder to be a good guy than it was a bad guy. Yeah. Take like something like Dishonored as well. Oh that yeah. Was, that was a yeah, it was like that was really, really tough to beat everyone in that game without killing and, you know And um, that's why I didn't uh, really care then I stopped killing people. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's why in sort of the original Mass Effect trilogy it was nice to have the bars be independent of one another. Yeah. So you you know you could be a really good commander who strayed off the off the the path every now and again, or you could be the absolute rebellious dickhead who had a heart, you know. But no, it's nice to see that uh, that Year One's Vampire Project. Well, don't forget the thing, uh, the game. Um... Kings of the Old Republic. Oh yeah, Star Wars. Yeah. That King, they they the Republic? they system of the being good and evil was great. I would say even even now, because the game mm. is what almost fifteen years old. Yeah, that makes me feel old. And they they good and evil 
uh, good and bad system still works. Mm. So yeah, I would like to play like on the third installment of this game. Yeah. Good RPG. Make me a little bit right. nostalgic. <laughs> it does. It does. Right, Duncan. It is your turn, sir. All right. So I've been ha- I've had a nasty habit of not playing games lately. I've uh, I've heard that that's the case. Yeah, I'm I'm having some problems. Uh, I did recently pick up. Uh, it's this is a bit of a uh, this is a bit of a wild card. I'll admit this is probably the biggest curveball I've thrown since I started recording for this podcast. I've uh, picked up a mobile game <gasps> on the recommendation okay. of uh, a coworker here. Yeah. Uh, it's called BitLife. BitLife. Yeah. So I don't know if anyone's ever heard of this before. Nope. But I, um, it sounds familiar, but only by name. So BitLife is a mobile game that is essentially it's essentially a glorified like idle game, but like with way more to it than a regular idle game, I guess. Okay. It's it's a randomly generated like it's like a random like procedurally generated like life simulator, like text-based life simulator. Oh my god. You start the game off be born as a baby as a random person. Uh, you don't choose any of your, just like in real life, you don't choose any of your starting stats at all. You you are a person. You're, I think you're. I don't know how many countries you can be born in. I know for a fact you can go UK and Canada. Both times I've been born, I was in Canadian. Yeah. Uh, I was a girl both times, so. <laughs> Good uh, stuff. Yeah. So your whole, your whole game is just is basically a, a menu with five options. Uh, it goes from, it's like school, assets, relationships, activities, and in the middle is just a big green button that says age. <laughs> Every time you cu- you press the green button, you age by one year. Okay. It's completely unceremonious. It's not like, it's not like, oh, here we go, you're aging a year, these are all the things that are happening. You just go, just bink, like- you are now one year old. Bink, you are now two years old. <laughs> uh, right, and occasionally gonna- you get, like, notifications telling you something that happened during that year. Okay, so while you're talking about this, I've just downloaded it. Steph's downloaded it. I'm gonna click the new life button. Okay. What what is it called again? Bit life. Bit life. B I T life. So age zero years. I was born a female in Denver, United States. I was an accidental pregnancy. Yeah, yeah. This is a. That's kind of like the weird thing about this game. You get some. It's not like a kids game. It's not really like a general audience's game. Like you get some like. Weird stuff. Like everything is fairly like tame and cutesy, like artistically. But yeah. like you know, sometimes you're born out of accidental crap. Sometimes you get cancer. You know, sometimes yeah, you get reject. You get turned down on your first date. You get stood up. Sometimes, sometimes you have conversations with people at random about how it's illegal to have to masturbate in Venezuela. You know, it's like you just get weird. It's just such a weird game. Yeah. I mean, my, my name is Susan Littlewood. My father is Apollo Littlewood, an insurance agent, aged 49. My mother is Kiara Littlewood, a choreographer, aged 25. We have a family dog named Amaya. And I don't I don't have a good good relationship with Amaya, yet I love my mother and father very much. Oh, you have sent me down the rabbit hole purely by telling me about this game, Duncan. Yeah, so, like, when you, obviously when you're an infant, there's not much you can do in terms of activities or interactions Hey, with I've been born in Dallas, and I've been plumped. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh, very good. So, Duncan, yeah, as you were saying, mate, sorry. So, in terms of activities and relationship stuff, like, there's not much you can do when you're in it as you're an infant. But as you get older and older, you can have more, you can have more elaborate interactions with your, with your, you know, your social circle, your family, your pets, your boyfriend girlfriend whatever Mm -hmm. uh you know you can do you can have you can manage your social media account you can manage your finances you can buy cars buy houses you know choose what school you're going to what job you want to get you know you can have sex with people you can go clubbing you can do your nails you can do your hair it's it's like there's quite a shocking amount of stuff that you can do really and yeah I don't know. I I constantly get this this weird feeling in the back of my mind, like this whole app is like some kind of weird social experiment to like test to see like 
how much people can be bothered to do certain things and keep up with certain activities as they get older and older and there's just more stuff to do and how many people just get like lazy and just kind of like do a couple things that they need to do to get their stats maxed out and then just move on because mm. it's just like i definitely feel myself like caring less and less about getting all everything i possibly can done in a single year <laughs> and just taking care of the important things maggie the family cat died at eight of twelve oh not the family cat no yeah if your pets die you can mourn the pet to make yourself feel better about it you can get a new pet you can also release your pet into the wild or sell them. Oh my god. It, that's another thing that's really weird about this game is that it gives you so many opportunities to just straight up blatantly play it wrong. To just do everything that you shouldn't do. Ooh, I can yeah. visit a doctor. Yeah, you can. It's like, and it's like sometimes like you can't really tell what you're going to do. Or what you've chosen to do is going to be a good thing or a bad thing right away, kind of like in real life. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, I had a I had a sister in this game that's four years younger than me, you know. And when I were first born, I was you know I was like, okay, maybe I this they like, so you give an option to rumble with them, and there's like a picture of a boxing glove next to it, and uh, I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of funny. I mean, I mean, I'm five years old and my sis my my sister is one, so maybe I shouldn't rumble with her yet, you know. I don't want to punch a toddler in the face, you know. Get <laughs> that was my suggestion for the other title, by the way. <laughs> oh, punch oh. a toddler in the face. Oh, uh, oh no. Um, Should I go to the funeral then or not? So, so when we got a little bit older, when I was, like, when I was eight and she was four, um, I was like, ah, maybe we'll rumble now, you know. And I just assume, in my, in, in my mind, I'm just imagining, like, you know, <clears throat> Like, play fighting, you know, as siblings do, you know, sometimes they wrestle, sometimes they tussle, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But then, like, I go, I click on Rumble, and I get this ominous notification asking me, are you sure you want to rumble with your sister? It's just like, well, well not anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you make a sound like I'm going to, like, beat the shit out of her. <laughs> like, I, to the I death. just thought I was just going to play a little, have a little play fight. You make it sound like I'm serious. <laughs> I don't want to fight her now. My sister oh, later no. grew up to join the Air Force. My dog now died. Not the dog. Get how? Oh my Get gosh. How? How did he die? Chicken bone? Mm, no. He was attacked by eagle. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not an eagle. That was the, the great, the great Dallas eagle. <laughs> just now when I, just now when I went, no. That I made, I made a sound wave in Audacity that looked like kind of like a pig. It was kind of cute. <laughs> Oh man, no. So, so you've sent us right down the rabbit hole, my friend. And that is, I, I sure have. Oh, that is going to be absolutely mad. I, I, I'd say we, you know, we don't usually rec. Well, we every now and again come to recommending games. I think this one's on the list purely due to how bit crushingly, bit crushingly, heart crushingly bitter this game could be. Yeah, this is like. I've had three pets that died over my life so far. I'm currently on my fourth, my third dog. Yeah. A little, a little mutt named Minnie. Uh, right Good now, Minnie. I am, um, how old am I? Like 31, I think? Right. 31 Wait, years old. Wait, are we talking about your real life or the game life? No, the game life. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not 31 years old, there. You would have known that if you had waited until I introduced myself as Mary Williams, a 31-year-old <laughs> female banker. Oh, nice. <sighs> um... Make sixty thousand dollars a year. I own a cute little uh, condo with my uh, with uh, my uh, we'll say dark skinned uh, husband, Landon Williams, who I've known since high school. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, we've got we've got uh, we have one car. We had two, but one got repossessed because I went to school. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I I didn't realize it didn't really tell me that I was this was gonna happen. Uh, I ended up having to leave my job to go back to school for, for um, graduate school. And uh, so, yeah, it just kicked me out of my old job. And, uh, like, my $30,000 a year worth of bills were just... I just didn't have the money to pay for it. So I had my I had my house repossessed and I had one of my cars repossessed. So I had to downsize. But now I make uh, way more money. Uh, and... Uh, Quaint little studio, but yeah, it's uh, 
it's interesting. It's just, I don't know. It's like, like I'm, I'm having, I'm enjoying it, but at the same time, it's like kind of like creepy to me. I don't know what it is about like, like life simulators like this. There's something like eerie about like pretending to live a, a different life and like, like doing way better at it than I am in my current life. Mm. You know, because it's like, oh, when it's just a press of a button, of course I'll go to the gym every day and read books at the library and do yoga and, oh, yeah, I'll get my hairs done and my nails done. I'll go get a boyfriend or, you know, all that good stuff. What the hell? But then I'm me and I'm not doing any of that. Uh, On the brink of World War III, Ethiopia and France have settled their differences for the betterment of their people. Excuse yeah. me, was that is that well, a, I had better that one you're getting in your game? That was in game at age ten years, Ethiopia and France settled their differences at the cost of two thousand and ninety five deaths and additional nine thousand and seventy four injured. On the brink of okay, World War Three, the United war- Kingdom and Romania have settled their differences for the betterment of their people. Casualties from the war measure in the thousands. Wait, only thousands for World War Three? Why do they that even was, bother calling that was, it that? That's the brink of the World War Three. So it's not actually World War Three. Oh, at the brink of World War Three. Okay, they didn't actually do it. Okay. Oh no! Damn it, Romania! So I knew basi- it. I yeah. So basically, the United were Kingdom were fighting Romanians. I mean, like, how do did they fought the Romanians who were already here? <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it's just like again. I just, I just, I also have just this weird nagging feeling in the back of my mind that there's some kind of like weird, like someone's collecting this data, and it's mm. like just paying, just watching intently what I do with my character because it's like I feel like there's just something to be said about the fact that you know when I'm really broke, I just can't be bothered to you know go out and do all like my cosmetics and you know maybe I don't worry so much about going to the gym. Every day when my house has been repossessed, you know, and I feel like, like, there's just this, the fact that they keep offering me the choice to do weird things, like, like, if I bump into somebody at the club, you know, I could either, like, just ignore them and walk away and nothing bad ever happens, or I could, like, literally charge into them and, like, like, body tackle them, you know, like, those are equal options in the same interaction, and I'm just like... They're just, they're only putting that in there to tempt people. They just want, they want to know what kind of sick people there are out there who just do crazy shit like this just to see what happens. And it's, mm. just, I don't know, there's something weird about, about that. Ah, oh, age 14 years, I've been diagnosed with depression. Wow, oh, good. Well, there are uh, mental health doctors in this game. Good for you. Yeah. Ooh, which local medical oh. doctor shall I consult? Dr. Gabe McCain or Dr. Andreas Gump? Gump sounds cool, so, but yeah, another other. Sometimes you can get some other weird interactions with like medical stuff too. Like I, I went to the doctor for four years to have to try to cure my migraines. I went to the chiropractor one time, and they cured my migraines forever. It's just like what? How did that happen? Yeah. Um, nocturnal gender has now been formally recognized as a gender option on Singapore's census. Nocturnal? What? Why? No, no. Ooh, I can commit a crime. Yeah, you can just do that. You can just you can just commit a crime if you feel I can like it. Like someone. I also, yeah. So yeah, that's that's my game of the week. I don't know what's going to happen as I keep playing, but um, oh sweet sweet money there, Steph. Four twenty, blaze it. I need work. Uh, I continue to suffer from depression. Right, based on that, then <laughs> before we end up going going on that further, we will discuss. I think with the time that we've got left. We will discuss one news story. So it's news time. News time. And I think it's just the top one. It has to be the top one. So we are probably the best three people to talk about E3 at the moment, considering we didn't do that best of E3 podcast. Uh, I've heard of E3. We yeah. are the not. We are the not E3. We are. But there is a slight advantage of that as well. And with Immaterial Gamers being such a fledgling thing that it is, none of us went to E3 because no one would know who we are. We wouldn't get a press pass. And that turns out at the moment that's a good thing because according to virtually everywhere in the world, 
but I got the story from gamesindustry.biz. The, de- the private details of 2025 games journal- uh, industry journalists and video producers, YouTubers, have been leaked online from the ESA's own website. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know that, uh, that theme music from oh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Is exactly that moment. According to the article, it was accessible via the website through a download link. You could just download everyone's information, and that's their phone numbers, addresses, other contact details, full name, address of 2,000 people. So, uh, yeah. The ESA unintentionally doxed 2,000 people. Can we I hate just it when I accidentally a... dox 2,000 press members. Yeah. You know, that's that's why I'm on the idea that, if, you know, when Immaterial Gamers gets off the ground, we're not going to have registration and, you know, game info. I don't want to have to deal with GDPR and the data protection and stuff like that. Just just let people comment Come and go. anonymously. It's it's not necessary, because I don't want to have to deal with shit like that. But then again, I feel that even I could do better than the ESA in keeping people's fucking protected details protected. Potato details as well. Yeah, they're, they're potato details. Oh, God. They know my address. They know my name. They know my credit card information. Oh, my God. Why did they know my potatoes? Yeah. So, you know, can we just give a (laughs) slow clap round of applause to the ESA for being grade A idiots. Thank you very much for joining me on that one, guys. That was that was really uh, perhaps uh, perhaps it's okay to be immaterial. Yeah, God, definitely, because no. My God! Right, you know what? Actually, that one went a bit quicker, uh, quicker than uh, I was expecting. We'll do one more. Oh, you heard about the big mixer news, right? There's a mixer, what? Yeah. So you know you got Twitch. Ah, okay. Microsoft has got a streaming service called Mixer, and they had the there. There was a big, massive announcement involving Mixer last week. That's right. They had their cleavage updates. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did you think I was going to talk about Ninja? I never watched him while he was on Twitch. Now he's going to be on a service that I don't even watch. Who the hell is Ninja? Uh, he's a Fortnite player. He's apparently the most popular Fortnite player, the most popular streamer on Twitch. Fortnite. Formerly. I said Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite. The game that shall not be named. But uh, yeah, no, there but was we the, just, the, the we other. Named it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there was the other story that's come out about uh, Mixer's clothing guidelines and how that determines what kind of streaming channel you actually are. Uh, this is according to PC Gamer. That uh, stated that. <laughs> oh, here we go. Where's the list? Here's the rating specific clothing guidelines and how it determines uh, whether you're family friendly or not. So, for a family friendly stream, clothing must cover the entire visible body from a few inches above the bust line. Uh, it cannot be strapless and should show little to no cleavage. Damn it! That's for a family friendly stream. You're a teen stream. Clothing can reveal more than a hint of cleavage, but still covers the entire visible body and cannot be strapless. And if you're uh, if you're an 18 plus stream, the chest must be covered from the bust line to the end of the ribcage. No under cleavage. So it's going on the idea that if there's even a little bit of skin, you are not family friendly, and only the adults should be watching your gaming stream. I mean, how archaic do you have to get? Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I just, I don't even know what to say. I really don't. I'm just making noises <laughs> in the microphone. You know, it's it's not like we, it's not like we're asking for a sort of a rule on here that just says, right, ladies, get your tits out, because that's just as fucking disrespectful as the other way. But you know, there's something to be said about the fact that. And, you know, these, these these streaming clothing guidelines seem to be heavily targeted towards the females as well. So, you know, it says something that that women can't, you know, dress how they wish to dress. 
without being told that they might be making themselves a sex object. I mean, come on. I mean, it covers in the same article that uh, Twitch's guidelines, that they're frustratingly vague of what did, what counts as clothing or not. I mean, it, it suggests that their streamers should wear clothes that they would, quote, wear on a public street or to a mall or restaurant. You know. Well, honest, kind of, I do kind of think the kind of guidelines are fine, but I would say... Mm-hmm. They went a little bit too far making it so specific. Yeah. That's that's the only issue. Other than that, I'm okay with guidelines. I feel like to counterbalance the issue of, you know, a you know, asymmetrical gender guidelines for clothing, we should just have like a bunch of topless dudes start start uh, streaming. Just have a bunch of dudes go out and dress, you know, quote unquote inappropriately and uh just See how long it takes for someone to Bump them. respond to it. You guys ended it's up just like, what do you gotta do? Ban us all? Yeah. Yeah, get people loading up a six pack stream. Or if it'd be something exactly. for, for someone like me, it'd be a six flab stream. <laughs> six flab, yeah. But yeah, good. Like, it, it would be great if we, like, it'd be great if we can get some, like, fit guys in there in, in particular. But, you know, just anyone, really. Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, I mean, cover, to be fair, cover the co- nipples, like, like, just, just, like, I don't know, put like tie a towel around the nipple area, and then just put everything else completely topless. Yeah. Look, guidelines. Am I right? Yes, I would say so. So yeah, that's like the the little bits of of news. You know what? One more. Screw it. We've got three stories. So let's get the three stories out of the way. So right at the beginning of Immaterial Gamers, a few of us played a game called Deceit. That okay. sounds like people don't remember that they played with Deceit. That or sounds like I happened. have not played Deceit. <laughs> you probably weren't around, I'm sure. Darius was. Steph, if he's still around, did. <laughs> but that was made by a game developer called Auto- uh, Automation Games. or Yeah, Auto- Automation Games. Um, and they were proceeding to look to make a Battle Royal, because every fucking company wants to make a Battle Royal, yeah. with their one that it was going to be a thousand person Battle Royal instead. That was their that was their gimmick. That is was to, to too add many more people, people in one server. Yeah. So it was it was called Maverick's Proving Grounds, and I say was because they've entered administration, filed for bankruptcy, are most likely going to shut down. Well, taking well, that, taking that project with it. Have they declared bankruptcy, or have they declared? Are they insolvent? They've they've entered administration, which mean over here, in terms of business wise, is effectively filing for bankruptcy. All their all their funds now get controlled by government appointed administrators, just to make sure that debtors get the money before the company usually winds up. There have been cases where a company that has been in administration does recover their finances and and sort of ends up getting a new buyer and, and stuff like that, but not very often. And that's what's happened in this case. The the information that, that's come on it is that apparently Deceit will continue to operate because licensing agreements have allowed that to continue, which basically sounds like they sold their IP on to someone who could run the game on their behalf. They could just be credited as developing it. Um, but the other thing on this is that this makes this now the second high-profile title. Here's a here's an admittal. I'd never heard of it until this article. But it's the second high-profile title of the the engine Spatial OS to have been canned. Um, the guys behind I Am Bread and Surgeon Simulator, Bossa Studios... They had a, an MMO out called Worlds Adrift, and I sort of looked forward to that being used, and then apparently that closed down a couple of months back, with them saying, vaguely stating that they, it was not a viable project, they tried to get the dream, but it's not something that could be done. Anyone who's bought this game will get our games as an apology, and going forward, these are the sort of titles you will expect from us in the future, which suggests that the the engine itself, Spatial OS, is not very good for game developers, which mm, s- uh, you know, sort of talks about a bigger problem 
but you know it's a, it's a shame i kind of liked deceit but i mean once you everything with these sort of hidden identity games like that there's only so many variations of the same theme you can play oh look yeah. you'll you'll never trust people you'll find reasons to never trust people you'll find times where you were right sometimes where you were wrong and sometimes where you just sowed the seeds of discord anyway i feel like yeah i feel like those kinds of games are are best played by by uh you know like web personalities and such anyway even though it's obviously a very small demographic as far as sales go mm. just because it's like you know and then because then they can be like a little throw in some wacky shenanigans <laughs> and role play and just other like just random crap that's not necessary for the game to progress to make it more entertaining yeah because otherwise i feel like a group of friends playing that kind of game over and over again eventually it, it gets kind of formulaic mm. yeah but, definitely uh, and that's that sort of sort of just sort of how how it worked but yeah but yeah i think uh, i think what they should have done is that uh, when the thing when they were starting to run over budget the uh, automation guys they should have just pivoted and turned the game to an auto chess yeah would have yeah, been way easier to develop and they would they would have had it out in a couple months made all oh their money God. back thousand per, per thousand person auto chess oh my god that would be ridiculous games oh. would last like 36 hours oh man oh they could do it on a tournament scene something like twitch rivals or something like that just like a a one shot auto chess imagine so sort of getting the big three who are doing the auto chess scene at the moment so the guys that made auto oh, chess no. valve and uh riot Shit. get them to do it my mother died age 74 on uh, the cause of death is eight. However, I inherited oh. thirty thousand dollars, three hundred. Oh, I'm so sorry for your virtual loss. Uh, R.I.P. I would have skipped the mom. funeral. <laughs> you skipped the funeral. Oh God, Darius! You heartless bastard! Thanks for the money, mom. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That's the title. Born you never. <laughs> That's the title. Thanks for the money, Mum. Bye. Oh, Jesus. Right, well, based on that then, because I think we, we got as, as much as we were talking about uh, auto chess and automation games there. Automation chess. Uh, no, we'll, we will wrap this up now. Come so, on, uh, it would be perfect. Automation makes auto chess? How did they not think of this before they went insolvent? The I, oh. They deserve to go bankrupt. <laughs> not for thinking for this. I, I'm, I'm kidding. They, there's a bunch of people. There are real people at that company who have jobs and families. Some of them have moms who may or may not be dying. And I shouldn't, yeah. I shouldn't say that. That's, it's. I, I hope they all do well in the future. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a shame that it's happened. But you know, lessons learned, I guess. So uh, don't try to develop games. Uh. F- Fit designed for one thousand people, and uh, if you do, don't use whatever that engine is. Yeah, don't use special OS. Apparently, don't don't use special OS. Apparently, it sucks. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we will wrap this up then. So if you enjoyed this podcast, you're a sick person. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but please, please do enjoy it. Do share it. Yeah, yeah, sh- yeah. Enjoy it. I mean, I can't tell you what to do, but please like, share, subscribe. Um. You know, listen to it on the podcasts, share it on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, all the stuff is in the description of both the audio feed and the video, so go ahead and do that. Um, our schedule, because this seems to be the thing that we do for the podcast, is the schedule. Check out the uh, channel trailer. No, well, do check out the channel trailer. But we start from the Tuesday podcast. Hello. Wednesday, every other Wednesday when we get back to it on hiatus at the moment shattered reflections thursdays team fight thursdays where we do some team fighty stuff fridays war table where steven does some war stuff fights aliens at the moment in xcom he's doing sufficiently uh saturdays play sessions or something immaterially different or an immaterial take on remind me duncan we need to sort something out for that one that you were looking to do yeah we should uh we should set a time for that sometime yeah because i am definitely up for that i've got my schedule posted on the discord so use that as a reference yeah will do uh sundays 
Sibling rivalry has returned. Woohoo! Yay! Episode 5 is up. Wink, wink. Um, but uh, yeah, we get back into it. The bingo is hotting up. And as, as a person who has watched these videos so far, it's getting interesting. And uh, Monday is going rogue. I'm near the end of my Hades journey. Whether I succeed in the final task, it will uh, be left for fate to decide. But, uh, you know, I've had fun with it. Need to now look at the list of roguelikes to see what's next. Maybe put them in the wheel and uh, get some choice. Unless anyone else wants to go rogue at some point. But, uh, I yeah. You always go rogue with FTL. I might have. Yeah. Or I might well. So definitely on I'm there. not sure. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, upcoming show. Role play. Uh, role play. Dual play is there. There's other ideas down the line as well. There are the idea. Yeah, there is the thinking. material. Is just we lacking a little bit of more time and basic time. Yeah. Stars. But we'll get there. <laughs> right. So with that, I want to say thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Darius. Thank you, Ryan. No problem. Always good to be here. And uh, thank you, Steph. Wherever you are. He's dead, apparently. Oh, that's a shame. No, I will. Well, we we. I will we, attend. I will inherit the money I will, attend, I will attend this funeral then. Okay, cool. Well, we we will all do that. So until next time, please, for God's sake, don't kill each other. Kill your life simulations instead. Yeah. Wait till your mom dies. Collect the inheritance. Yeah. Don't go to her for your <laughs> I can't endorse that, but you know what can we do? Right. See you next week, see guys. Next week. Bye bye. bye.